Hello. 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 <laughs> Hi, Beth. <laughs> Hello. Everybody I'm still, else. I'm still eating my dinner. Thank <laughs> <laughs> <Up> you. <laughs> Carrie? Yes. Did we get the um, check and stuff from um, Dandelion Energy? No, they did not come in today. That's not good. I don't think we can open the hearing for them. But we'll talk about that. Hi, Mary. All right, just about seven o'clock. Mark, is uh, Chris Stoddard going to be with you tonight? Um, I thought he was, but he's not yet. Okay. Well, it's seven o'clock. Do you want us to hold off for a few minutes and see if he signs in? Um, I think we can go ahead. Okay. And if there's technical questions, that maybe he'll, he'll, he'll chime in later. Yeah, well, let's just wait one more minute. Okay. Do you want to reach out to him, see if he's coming? Yeah, I'll send it to Dex, I guess. We've got your husband serenading us, Robin. Oh my God, you can hear him? Yeah. <laughs> Should I mute? You didn't think we could? <laughs> That's funny. It's okay. Don't worry about Nobody it. Nobody said anything before. And oh, like we were in it's after. Just, it's just provided a very relaxing ambiance to our meetings. <laughs> Can I like turn my 
if I turn my volume down, will that? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It's 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 really nice. (laughs) Why we should all have music for our meetings. (laughs) Nobody said anything before, but this is what. There's no other place in the in the house to go where you can't. We have a really open floor plan. And so you have to be upstairs in a bedroom. Upstairs is the only place you have doors that close besides the bathroom. Okay. So it's okay. I don't mind it. Um, (laughs) If other people find an issue, they can ask and we can have her mute. Ask and I, yeah, I'll mute me. Um, Okay. Uh, Mark, do you think you're going to be having Chris? Yes, yeah, he just sent me a reply to my text and said that he had the wrong link, but he's coming on now. Okay, great. Then I'm we here. Will. I'm here. Sorry about that. That's all right. Hi. All right. Well, let's open the meeting at 7.03. And so we're going to open the public hearing for the notice of intent for 70 Lake Drive. Mark Rivers is the landowner. And Chris Stoddard is the engineer. Um, would you like to... Uh, screen share uh, or have us screen share the design and maybe give us a, a brief overview. Yeah, uh, I can screen share if I have. Great, go ahead. Privileges. And they do. Okay, can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Yes. Uh, for the record, Chris Stoddard started in here. Um, so this is for 70 Lake Drive. So um, the project here basically consists of repairing the existing retaining wall which we can zoom in here this is the existing existing conditions uh for reference north is straight up uh, south east and west in the respective directions uh lake wyola is here um the existing house with the deck patio landscaped areas um let me zoom in a little bit so there's the existing walkway that's here, the existing set of stairs, and here's the existing retaining wall, basically follows approximately the top of the bank of Lake Wyola. Um, it is currently rather heavily vegetated along that bank, blueberry bushes, some, uh, I'll call them pine trees, even though I know they're not, they're not pine trees, a um, bunch of different vegetation. So the project, um, what we're proposing to do here is re reconstruct, but not with heavy equipment, the re- existing retaining wall that's there, um, as well as adding another lower retaining wall to create what basically a terraced effect. Um, and then add in a bunch more plantings, some more blueberry bushes to kind of fill in the gaps that are within the, um, within the area now. Um, and then raise the grade of the yard approximately a foot and a half to two feet um, by doing this, what we're hoping to um, to accomplish here is that we will um, the property will flatten out a little bit. We reduce that runoff slope, um, which should, in theory, reduce the stormwater runoff on the property um, into the lake and hopefully help it infiltrate even more than what it does currently. Um, as I said, there's no heavy equipment. This is being done by a company that comes in and basically everything is by hand. Mark can kind of speak to the company a little bit more if um, if you folks would like. Um, and obviously the uh, the grading of the property, there's really no access for trucks. So it's pretty much wheelbarrows and um, shovels and rakes. Um, we are proposing straw waddles. Um, I don't think still fence is necessary and only because we, they are not using heavy equipment. So I don't think there's gonna be a massive amount of a disturbance to the property. Um, the plan is to actually not remove any of the existing vegetation that's within that area of the bank. So we don't see any um, issue with uh, erosion during the construction project. Um, I can kind of zoom it out. This is kind of a blown up version of what we're hoping to kind of get. So the existing yard kind of slopes on this angle. Building up this site will flatten the yard out there and then adding some uh, stones to build up the terrace effect in the front. Um, we are not proposing to go in the water, um, but we are obviously proposing work within the bank of the of the um, lake. 
Uh, we did show some blueberry, some additional blueberry bushes being planted. I do have a detail for the plantings and then a detail for the sedimentation and erosion controls. Um, I do have, let me open, I'll leave the plan up. Um, DEP did comment. Um, I think we did make the uh, necessary correction to the plan and then they did ask us to meet the required performance standards. And so I did supply a revised narrative, but I'll go through that real quickly. Um, the first standard I is- Just ask a couple questions before you move on to that piece. Yeah, yeah sorry about that, go ahead. Um, how you're not proposing this as a bank project that you submitted it as buffer zone. Um, could you just kind of go through your thought process about why this isn't a bank project? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We, I believe it is now based on the comments from uh, Mary from DEP. So we did revise the um, narrative to explain how many feet of bank area we are disturbing and uh, the performance standards for work within the bank area of the lake. So let me just ask Janice or, or Beth, if they're changing that, do they need to resubmit the NOI? because they're proposing a different resource impact? Um, so he, he did revise the, uh, the narrative, but, but did you also revise the form and include the numbers for like yeah. impact numbers to bank? Uh, we, we added that within the narrative. We didn't revise the actual NOI itself. Yeah, I think the form, especially because when we issue the the order of conditions, you know, a lot of the numbers and things are actually based on what's in um, the NOI. The NOI numbers, especially if you at this point know that you're changing it, it's not really based on like us making comments or anything. It's it's you. Um, it should really get corrected. The form should. Okay, yeah. we can do that. We can revise the NOI. I agree. I don't even know how to revise. I probably have to. That's gonna be a new one. Um, I can probably just have to resubmit. Do I have to just resubmit? Because I don't I think, think there's an can, ability. I think what you can do, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you can do it in a PDF form and email it to DEP. Is that correct? Yeah. And say say uh, that you want to keep it to keep it um you're not withdrawing, I guess add your file it. number to the top what? of the form so they know add which one it is. Number. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This came, yeah, up with another project. this came up with another project they were talking about later today where they were, there was a couple of different versions and uh, Mary Grover said, if you withdraw it and you resubmit, then you have to pay the fee twice. If you're just correcting or amending an existing one, then you don't have to pay the fee over again. And the file number doesn't change, so. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Because yeah. I just knew, I knew I couldn't go into EDEP and revise it there. I don't think there's a provision. I don't think you can. You have to do it um, and send it. I would send it to Mary Grover and to the Wiro email and CC us so that we have a copy. Okay, that's easy enough to do. So, yeah, so that we'll have to fix that and we're going to have to continue. We can't close the hearing without actually, um, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Would do you want to keep going on this? Yeah, let's keep going and get through as much as we can get through while we're here. Okay, uh, is there any more questions or do you want me to move on? Yes, yeah, so, so the question, I that that answers the question because it was buffer zone. I were wondering like why it would be buffer zone. So I, so I think you have to, um, you have to give us the uh, calculation of what you're proposing to change in the bank. Correct, yeah. Um, so we'll wait on those numbers from you later. So 217 ahead. square feet, if you want to know right now. But what is it? 217? Yeah, it's 217 square feet within the bank area. Okay. But okay. So um obviously, and so one of the comments I know from Mary was um to we have to prove that we or we have to meet the performance standards uh within the work within the bank of a land underwater body. Um so the first standard was the physical stability of the bank to propose. Uh, the pros project shall increase actually increases the stability of the bank um, as the walls proposed will reduce the runoff within the lake um, by reducing that 
steepness of the slope, we're hoping to obviously uh, increase the stability there, plus with the additional plantings. Um, the second one was the water carrying capacity of the existing channel within the bank. Um, uh, as this bank is associated with a lake, not a stream, water carrying capacity should not be an issue within this project. Um, we're not worried, I don't believe that standard applies in this situation, but I could be wrong. Uh, groundwater and surface water quality. Um, so the proposed project is intended to improve the groundwater and surface water quality by reducing the slopes towards Lake Wyola, which will result in reduced run runoff rate and allow for water surface water to be treated and infiltrated with, within the buffer zone of the bank up in this area here and obviously within the bank. Um, the fourth one is the capacity of the bank to provide breeding habitat, escape cover, and food uh, fisheries. Uh, obviously, the existing site has a very diverse list of plant species located within the bank. Uh, the proposed project will not remove any of the existing plantings, and we will be adding terraces, which will allow for additional plantings to help with the breeding habitat and the escape cover. Uh, and then number five, alteration of Let's see. Alteration of less than 10% or 50 feet of the length of the bank shall not be deemed to impair its capacity to provide important wildlife habitat functions. Additional alterations beyond the above threshold may be permitted if they have no adverse effect on wildlife habitats. Uh, this is kind of the same as the last one, but the first project will have no adverse uh, effects on wildlife habitats as the project is not removing any vegetation. We are adding plantings to increase uh, it will be increasing the wall height to allow for additional areas where wildlife can be breed, cover, and feed. Um, I think that's basically it. I think, I hope we prove that we do meet those performance standards um, of the bank. And I can answer any questions. Oh, somebody has a hand up. Yeah, I have a question too. Go ahead, who has a question? Janice. Oh, okay. Miriam, go. You go ahead. Con -com should um, go first. What time of year were you wanting to do this? Would, would this work would be done during the drawdown? That's uh, this is Mark here. Uh, that's my intention. Uh, okay. Drawdown, which is going to occur in another month. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Janice. Um, I thought that there was a requirement if you're altering more than 50 linear feet of bank that you that the CONCOM had to um, get a wildlife habitat evaluation. I don't know if that's mandatory or um, or not. <laughs> I don't think I don't, I'm not the right person to answer that question. Yeah, I'll, I'll try looking it up in the regs, but I thought it was mandatory, but I'm not positive. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so too. <clears throat> it is mandatory. Yeah. All right. I have a quick question. Um, the the new wall is not getting any actual actually closer to the lake. It's same distance from the lake. Yeah, the original wall is at the top of the bank. Just you know, basically keeping up that. Uh, Making that a little bit higher, but it's not that's not going close to the lake. Uh, there's a terraced wall that doesn't exist right now. Not sure if that uh, uh, that you know, not sure if that is a yes or a no to your, your question. It's yeah, te it's, it's technically not closer to the lake because we're adding. Basically, where the existing wall comes down through our, our proposal is just to increase it at the bottom a smaller height to create a terraced effect. So we're not adding rocks down in this area. We're just going from the existing wall that was kind of there. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah. Has anybody uh, figured out what the regs are? I'm Googling it or I'm, I'm looking at it right um, now. The threshold, I'm here. I'm looking here for the resource series bank. 10% of the length of the bank on a single lot or 50 linear feet, whichever is less, uh, is the threshold deemed not to impair. So what is the, and what, what is the length of the bank here? And the 260 
feet plus or minus? No, that's not right. No, no, no. We have 120 feet of total frontage. Oh, so sorry. It's, uh, it's over 50. It's about 100, 100 feet or so. 100 feet of bank? Approximately, yes. Okay. Um, and is it, um, and what, and it's more than 10% of the length of the bank on the lot. That's because you're doing the whole, you're doing the whole, Correct. almost all of it, right? Correct, yes. What is the width of the lot? Um, bear with me. <clears throat> Hundred and twenty two feet plus or minus a foot. Okay. So it looks like um this would does meet that threshold of impact. So you have to get a what you are required to get a wildlife habitat evaluation. Sorry. Wild, uh, does a wildlife habitat evaluation apply to the whole lake or just to this uh, the hundred and twenty feet? Uh -huh. I'm having Mark. I'm having a little hard time hearing you. I don't know if you can speak closer to your computer. Um, does the wildlife habitat evaluation refer to just 120 feet or to the whole lake as we did during the um, uh, during the drawdown uh, notice of intent? I am having a hard time understanding. Somebody else uh, understand the question? Did any of you understand it? No. 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 Sorry. I'm in a little garbled. Yeah, it's breaking. You're breaking up a little bit. And how's oh, this? I think it's better. better. Uh, okay. Let's see. Go ahead. So the question, my question is regarding the wildlife habitat evaluation. Uh, we when we did the notice of intent for the drawdown, we had one for the whole lake. Right. It, is this equivalent to that, or is it different for just my just the 120 feet? Well, it would be, I think it would be more specific to your particular project. So it would be a habitat evaluation that they would basically do based on the work that you're going to do, and they would look at your parcel. Okay, so we can't use the original one. Cannot. I don't think okay, so. Good to know. And you're talking about the one that was done like in 2019, Mark? Yes. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we, that you can do that. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but um, do we have more questions? Let's move on. Any more questions about the project, the construction? So you're going to do it during the drawdown period. I have one more question. This is not in bordering land subject to flooding. That was a, another question from DP. Uh, I don't believe so. I know there's like a small area um, that's closer to where the dam is that's got yeah. some bordering land subject to flooding, but I, I didn't remember exactly where it was. So uh, I don't. I mean, I don't. I can double check, but I do not believe so. No. Okay. Cool. The uh, the um, the the water line is a few feet below the um, lawn area. There's oh it's yeah it's about it's approximately five feet below feet down right. So if this thing floods, we got a whole lot more problems. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> okay, and I think that was the only DP comments. Um, at that in the bank question. All right. Um, do we have any more questions? And I'm, you know, I think it's great that you're um, maintaining some of the vegetation you already have. It's is a, a vegetated strip along your bank already, which is a good thing. So um, that's wonderful. And um, they're adding some more native vegetation. Is there more questions we have or any comments from the public? Okay, any uh, no comments from the public? Okay. 
Um, and there was, um, I just commenting, I did share, there was an email that we received from your butter um, with some comments about the project. Um, but it, I'm not sure if, um, we oh. need to read that in at this point. I did share it with, I yeah. did share it with Mark and I shared it with the commission. Yeah, and those that we're not working in that area of the site because that would have been over in this area here. That well, the were... question was, it had to do with the, that um, fence right. and um, yeah. it's along six, near 66 Lake Drive and, and you're not doing any work along there. Nope. Okay, um, do we have, is this, can we agree? I'm looking at my ske our schedule for our next meeting, which is the 22nd. I'm not sure you can get your wildlife habitat evaluation in such a short period of time, however, because um, we can reschedule to that date, but. Um, let's not, let's not, Miriam, let's wait till I have a, have the wildlife habitat evaluation because that could take okay. a while. They might have one schedule. Okay, and we can continue with an uncertain date. Is that right? I'm not sure how that works. No, you need to have a, you need to have a date and a time and have the applicant agree. Yeah, we need a date certain. That's why I thought. So why don't we, and, and then we can continue again if we have to. So let me let's put this off, Mark, if you feel okay about that. We're meeting in October on the 13th and 27th. Do you want to shoot for one of those dates? Um, you know, well, uh, you know, there's a concern. Well, the lake will be drawn down through the winter time, so I think we'll be okay. Let's, let's do the first week, the first meeting in October. Okay, so that so that would be. Um, let me get back to my calendar. Sorry about that. I just moved out of my calendar. Okay, so the first meeting would be the thirteenth. Um, so, um, we don't have anything scheduled. <laughs> for the October 13. And so let's do seven o'clock. Is that okay with you? Yep. All right. All right. Um, so um, would somebody like to make a motion to continue to October 13th at seven? I'll make a motion that we continue this public hearing until October 13th at seven. Second. Second. Hey, David. Hi. Font. Aye. Harrington. Me a mute. Aye. And um, Wilson. Aye. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And um, we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, guys. you. thank you, Mark. It's Chris. Okay, um, we have another um, public hearing at 7.30 and it's 7.25. Um, why don't we take care of the minutes? Um, has everybody had a chance to look at the draft minutes for July 14th? Yes. Yes, yes look good to me. Great. Yep. Okay, somebody wanna make, uh, and Robin gave me, found a little typo and emailed me about it. So I've corrected that little typo. Um, so does somebody want to make a motion to approve? A motion that we approve the 714 minutes. Okay. Um, second. Second. David. Aye. Font. Aye. Harrington. Aye. Aye. Um, I don't know if we could take care of this in this amount of time. I don't know if they're here yet. Are George Abdo here yet? No, he's not because we were going to go over his planting plan. Um, let me see. Carrie, you had your hand raised. I think Abdo is coming around 8.15. Yeah. Next. I just thought if he showed up earlier, we could take care of that. Okay. Uh, but that is not going to happen. All right. Um, So um, we can go over site visit discussions for a couple minutes. So we did a site visit on um, Saturday morning. Mary and I looked at 10 Haskins Way, which is a deck project with Joe Salvador. 
um, and we did not see any wetlands in that area. So uh, our recommendation is to approve the building permit. Yes, I was there too, wasn't I? Well, I was there too. Sorry, Robin. I want to leave you out. <laughs> um, so Beth and I took a look and went and joined the planning board. I haven't written it up. Um, and did a site visit at the Wheel of Track Solar Project um, on yesterday. And um, they did some repair work on their driveway. Um, and they also did some repair work on a uh, detention base and retention base and infiltration base and whatever you want to call it, uh, that is hold had been holding water and wasn't uh, infiltrating. Um, and the upshot of it was that they were able to muck it out part of it, but there's a section of it that didn't drain. They said it was because they encountered too much of a clay. I suspect it's because the water table's too high in that location. So it's still holding some water, uh, but there's quite a bit more storage capacity than there was before. And, um, the planning board climbed under a fence to go look at the rest of the array, and I was not interested in doing that. Neither was Pat, so we didn't go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just didn't want to get on my back and climb under a barbed wire, you know, <laughs> a metal fence. I couldn't believe the three of them just wiggled themselves right under that. Well, they could do that, but, you know, if I had gotten stuck, then you would have had to get the fire department. <laughs> it would have been emergency services would have to be there. It would not have been a pretty sight. So I didn't want to put anybody through that. <laughs> um, so I don't, it, you know, that really wasn't the focus of what they were going to be looking at. It was really to look at this stormwater um, feature. And I, you know, Beth mentioned this, and I just want to recall that during the permitting, this particular detention basin, they didn't do the soils testing during the public hearing because they said they couldn't get any heavy equipment over to that location. Um, but there was high groundwater is what they said during the hearing they were expecting. So um, that's probably what the case was. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of, the, there was a lot of fines almost in that, in the soils there. So they're just not great soils for um, a stormwater feature like that. So, but well, they, it's there. So it's there. <laughs> there. Uh, we didn't see any evidence of any uh, flooding out of it or releases into a wetland area. So mm -hmm. it was something that was concerning. Yeah. All right. So that was that. We'll save some of the other discussions for later. Um, and. I think now it's we're at 7:30, so we can go on to the next project, which um, is the public hearing for 86 Sand Hill Road. And um, who is here to talk about that project? Is Tom Colt here? And I see Hannah Kowalski. You're muted. Sorry, Hannah from Dandelion. Hi, is Tom here too? The landowner. I'm, oh, I'm not sure if he's coming today or not, but I, I am here. Okay. Um, so um, as of this afternoon, when the end of business, we had not received the check from your mm -hmm. office. So I'm not sure we can open the public hearing without having the check in hand. Um, there was also some question from DEP that they were checking on about whether um, the application, whether they had the the uh, the updated application, did, mm -hmm. you revised you revised it and did you submit it to them? You, I remember I emailed you about this. You sent them the yes. Uh, so I, we updated the application with them. We were having issues of like the fellow mentioned earlier, where you can't revise. You know, once you've submitted, um, right. so we we withdrew and we resubmitted with the new application. I know there's some talk about the fees and, and whatnot, um, but it has the new uh, resource area with the corrected. Um, so you notified you know. DP that you were withdrawing? Yes. Okay, because we didn't get that. Um, okay. 
and also that would mean then they would have to issue a new file number if you withdrew it. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, reach out to them then. Um, so am I so am I correct about this? Yeah, they yeah. I'm assuming they would be issuing a new one, and we can't open the hearing unless we have a DEP number. Okay. So, so and and I just wanted to say there were there were a number of comments that just came in today from DEP. Some mm -hmm. of them uh, repeats of some comments that I had made. I had given you some feedback, but uh, I think that um, you know I can loop back with you if you have questions about that before you our next hearing. Yeah, that's fine. Um, for the next hearing, should we do a new public notice as well? Um, just because I'm not sure if anyone's here today from either neighbors or the public to have comments or questions. Um, is there anybody here who is wanting to comment on this project for seven, for 86 Sand Hill Road? Because it would be under a new file number, it, mm -hmm. it you have to do the new notifications again, is my understanding. Okay. I can double check if they haven't withdrawn it on your end, it might not have gone through. We did a phone or I called Mary and I also sent an email. So it's possible that it just got lost in the shuffle or just didn't go to the right person. Um, if that's the case, would it be easier to withdraw the new application and edit the old one? Because I, I was operating under the assumption that we had already, that had already been withdrawn our, our previous application. I don't think you can go back and forth like that. That's not the way the process runs. You'd end up having to get a third number. You can't go back if the other one's been withdrawn or, or eliminated. I gotcha. And the original reason um, for the with, uh, for the resubmission was because it was in Riverfront area and you hadn't submitted the original one in Riverfront area. Is that what am I? Yeah, I, I mistakenly considered, and I, I realize my mistake now, but um, the 200 foot uh, riverfront resource area, I was considering that to be a buffer zone, but it is it is a separate thing. It is not a buffer for the river. It's a separate protection area. Okay. Um, all right. Yes. So um, that's the same issue as what happened before. Uh, and mm -hmm. you've got to straighten out with DEP the fees because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the two applications, I realize that it's kind of a mess. So I, I yeah, with two applications, it may be that you have to pay if you've done a withdrawal and resubmission. You may have to pay the fee to them and to us again. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And um, just for the sake of uh, you know not wasting folks' time today, um, is there anything that we should talk about in the public forum before? we close this file until next time or? Um, we don't need to talk about it in the public forum, um, but I just, you know, there was feedback about the mapping and mm -hmm. uh, there are some questions about that. So I think that, you know, you need to kind of address those. Those came from mm -hmm. deep as well. So. Um, okay, that's fine. I think that one of the questions just is that it looks you know, there's no uh, flagging points on the map. So when you are calculating distances and there's flagging in the field, it isn't clear how those, whether those flagging points were uploaded in GIS, mm -hmm. or whether you were using some other um, tool for estimating. I gotcha. The yeah, just, and I'll, I'll change this in the narrative so it's more clear, but just for everyone's general information, uh, we were able to get GPS points from the flagging in the field and put that into a CAD program. And then we measured using the CAD program just because that allows for a more linear, you know, bird's eye measurement as opposed to doing something in the field where we might be affected by topography. Okay, Janice. Um, I was just wondering who did your delineation work? Cause it seems like you didn't get very good advice on what to do with that information. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, yeah, so we had, um, our wetland surveyor was, um, I think it was Ward Smith, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ward Smith. Okay, they hit and run. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I think, I, I know it says in your, um, the NOI packet that you don't give recommendations for folks, but are there any, uh, can you give a recommendation for folks just because we're new to this area and we wanna make sure, you know, going forward, Hopefully there's less back and forth and we you know get everything done right the first time. Um, 
No, we, I, we, we can't make recommendations. Yeah, that's, well. that's fine. I just figured I'd, I'd ask. I know what you said it in the, uh, the packet as well. So that's yeah. completely understandable. I mean, these aren't really, I mean, some of the questions aren't really around wetland delineation. It's around the regulations for filing and, you know, the mapping mm -hmm. issues. So, you know, like things like DP, one of the DP comments was that you should have a north indicator. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it says not drawn to scale. Usually DP wants um, engineered studies, uh, site plans um, to scale and the scale indicated on the site map, unless mm -hmm. we waive that and we didn't waive it. Gotcha. Um, so that is, that's a DP re requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you guys have a, a list of potential consultants? You know, sort of a long list so people have a choice, but at least they have yeah, somewhere to document. start. We have that document. Did you ever okay. get Hannah? Yeah, we reached out to about five or six people and we only heard back from two. Oh. So we went with the, okay. you know, of the two who could meet our timeline and, you know, yep. initially, which you know, has pros and cons, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, we should take a look at that list and see if it's the most current um, in terms of consultants that, you know, it's not an extensive list but you know over time some people may have retired some people may have moved into the area doing work so we should take a look at that i'm i'm just revising it uh the grand beacon come one now so i can send you it and you can use whoever you want you know some of them are overlap and some may not in terms of area but uh, yeah there are quite a few that have either been bought out by others have retired or or something or other yeah okay absolutely and and like i said i i recognize I mostly ask for recommendation just out of curiosity. We're not, our company's not local. So, you know, it's it's a learning process and I just wanna obviously do everything right and hopefully with less uh, edits and pain going forward. One thing Hannah, I noticed I was a little unclear about is when um, we had another project that we permitted for you um, mm -hmm. that was being for your company, but the uh, homeowner was doing the permitting. We got like a, an erosion control plan document. yeah there is in the supplemental documents um if so if you open the permit application itself the big big reduced file packet um page 46 47 and 48 are letters from our engineer documenting um, erosion control compliance with codes and trenching uh just general information um i don't know if he Usually we like to do our permits, all of our permits in-house, just so that we, you know, have a clear communication with you what we're doing and can explain and show examples of, you know, kind of what our best effort is. And, and unfortunately that did not work with uh, the previous permit you guys um, submitted or approved. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I'm not sure I saw that. I'll have to take a look at it. All right, thanks. Yeah, no worries. If you, um, um, if there's any issues with the reduced file, like I said um, in the email earlier this week, in the overnight packet, when it eventually arrives, there is a flash drive that has the non-reduced version of the files. So it's like 32 gigs just because of the size of some of the scans. Um, but if you have any issues, feel free to yeah, email. Maybe, um, Carrie, you can try to email those to us or something. Um, try to send those or um, distribute them. Um, okay. All right, let's, uh, I think we can move on. So we're gonna need to come up with a date um, after you submit, I think. Okay, um, that should be fine. We can yeah. do, if there's space in the next meeting, we can set for that. If not, whatever is easiest for you guys. Uh, the 22nd, um, we could do eight o'clock. Perfect. All right. All right. So, um, because you're going to have to do the notifications, you can go ahead and do the notices for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's move on. Um, seven four. It's um. We have a few more minutes before we go to um, the RDA for uh, six seventy four Wendell Road. Um. Are there any other short items that we can just take care of? 
I guess for updates, um, I issued the emergency certification for 35 Weatherwood Road. Um, and I'm thinking that we need to ratify it um, at this meeting. We need to have a motion to approve it. Am I correct about that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I can pull it up if you need to see it. Um, do you guys need to see it? I'm okay. <laughs> okay. So does somebody want to make an approve for make an approval a motion? I I make a motion to ratify the emergency cert for 35 Weatherwood Road. Second. Okay, second. David. Okay, Hi. David. Aye. Harrington. Aye. Font. Aye. And Wilson. Aye. Okay. Um, another quick issue, I think, would be that we need to set up um, a site visit to, to go take a look at the Dudleyville Dam. Um, and um, I, I did a site visit due to a complaint and concern about a beaver dam and creating possible hazard. Um, and I met with Becky Torres and uh, the Cat Hilton from the Board of Health. Um, and the landowners, uh, Lois Brown and David Brown. Um, the dam itself belongs to Lois Brown. They live, brother and sister live next door to each other and own parcels of land, but the actual dam itself belongs to her. Um, and uh, the Board of Health did not feel it was an imminent risk requiring a, a permit, an emergency permit for removal. Um, however, in that meeting, um, what I learned was that uh, her brother, David, is doing work on the dam on an ongoing basis, working on the uh, banks of the downstream side of the dam. Um, so I thought we should go take a look at it and talk to them about what they're doing. Sounds so good. <laughs> get to see it. Um, so... Uh, the beavers are at least letting it maintain some water. So <laughs> good for habitat. Okay, so um, I will email everybody about trying to pull, you know, find some times when we can do a site visit. And um, Eversource permitting, we can talk about that very quickly. So we got an email from SWCA, who is um, from Becky Weissman, who is the consultant hired to do the permitting and I spoke with her today. And so they're going through this NEPA review process that's going to be ongoing for a while. Um, but one of the, uh, there's two pieces to this. One is that they're gonna be, um, and DP is gonna be looking for ways to coordinate um, the NOI permitting. So that there's some uniformity in approaches. And I, I reached out and had a conversation with Adam, I think his name is Adam Cole, who is the conservation agent for Wendell and Leverett. And um, I'm going to go to their conservation commission meeting on Monday night and hear about what they're thinking about with this. Um, but one of the issues is that Eversource is reaching out to conservation commissions for mitigation projects because there's gonna be some wetland impacts um, and so uh, they might be uh, willing to contribute funds towards some conservation projects as for mitigation, which could, be, which could be land acquisition or some other projects. I asked her if she had any ideas of how much money <laughs> might be available. Um, in terms of land acquisition, she said in some other communities, they're starting to have some conversations with Kestrel Land Trust about this. So I sent an email to Kestrel as well to see if there were any anything that they were thinking about for Shootsbury that might be relevant. Great, that's great. I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, so that could be a good thing. Um, and then um, I think, I don't know who suggested it, but one of the other ideas that got thrown out was um, maybe seeing if they'd be willing to contribute to um, the need for updated bog bridges in the Southbrook Conservation Area. 
Yeah, I, I think that's great too. <laughs> I mean, in that case, all I guess it, all of it. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sure they're going to say um, we'll come up with some sort of a you know a cost estimate for us, so we would have to look at that bog bridging and and you know see how much we really want to do linear feet, figure out some costing, mm -hmm. but. That's great. Yeah, I think I told Miriam that Amherst has definitely benefited from Eversource funds that have come from as mitigation for a number of different projects. So um, it's great. Yeah. Okay. So to be determined. Um, all right. Um, let's go to it's now 747. So I see um, the landowners here. Huckle. Hi. Hi, just finding the unmute. Sorry. Hi, welcome. Thanks. So um, this is for this construction project. Do you, um, and my understanding is that the RDA is being submitted, even though you've already done the um, foundation work that you're proposing. Right, uh, based on our last meeting. Yep. Yes. Um, so we uh, thank you for submitting the RDA. Um, and you know, I hope it was clear why we we're doing this because sure. you know, it was work done without a permit. So now, yeah, tr truly my mistake. That's okay. I, at the very edge, and I didn't think it was really impacting, but truly should have done that. Sorry. It's okay. So this seems like a pretty. So the work's already done. done. <laughs> uh, does anybody do you want to explain what you did? <laughs> uh, I mean, just the short summary is the foundation was installed about 15 years ago, and it was in a dumbbell shape because it was going to be a house, a garage, and a connector. And uh, I don't need a big house. I have a small little house on the side. So uh, we're making a workshop out of it. And in the design process, realized a rectangle would be better. Um, and I didn't really think about it much because I have very extremely good draining gravel there. There's, it doesn't feel like any sort of wetland or riverfront resource area because it's just all gravel and, uh, and it's mature that's been there for 15 years. Um, so I didn't really think about it. And it turns out that the, the wetland offset is far away, but the 200 foot riverfront uh, is, as I remembered on the edge of the existing building, I didn't realize it cut across that little part about 14 feet of uh, foundation. Sorry, the pictures are helpful, but anyway, uh, it, it was just kind of getting down a little bit on the gravel there to hand put in some, a little bit of concrete and that was done. Um, and it, no silt, no erosion, no nothing, no rivulets, nothing has happened there because it drains immediately. <laughs> like I went out there this last rain just to take a look and there's not a single puddle through any of it, even after that three and a half inches we really needed and got. So, summary? so, so the area that where there was, I, I'm trying to remember, there, there was some disturbed soil area that hadn't revegetated. Um, I think we were probably hoping, I'm sorry, getting rid of this call. No problem. Um, I, I think we were probably hoping for some erosion controls around that. And so I put in a silt sock just in preparation of, of this meeting or anticipation. I, I think we'd mentioned a silt fence might be more damaging because it'd be digging into the soil that I'm trying to keep from eroding. So there's a silt sock, it's a hay filled uh, or straw, sorry, it's a professionally, I just purchased it, but straw filled net and it uh, goes along all the lower areas where any water, water never runs out there, but if it did and we had a hurricane more than Irene, I guess that's where it would go. Okay. And there's very little uh, open sandy soil that it, the, the resulting what was dug a little bit and replaced is just a gravel. So it's not uh, something that would float well or move well with any water movement. Okay. Um, well, I don't have any more questions. Does anybody else have questions from the commission? No. No. And oh. uh, anybody from the public comments? All right, um, some, oh, Penny, you have your hand raised. Uh, yes, I, I just, uh, from many years ago, I do remember that Huckle did apply for all the appropriate paperwork for the original foundation. So um, I'm sure this was just an oversight. Yeah. yeah. Correct, thanks, Penny. 
Okay. Um, so does somebody want to make a motion to close the public meeting? I'll make a motion to close the public meeting on um, 674 Wendell Road. Okay, second. I second. David. Aye. Defont, aye. Harrington. Aye. I'm sorry, wait, we, Elizabeth, did you have your hand raised for this? I just have a very quick question. I read on the agenda that you were gonna be talking about something called an enforcement order. Did we miss it? No. Is it not happening? Um, we'll talk about it after this. After the meeting's closed and then you open the meeting again? After this public meeting, just for this project, this public hearing that we're closing, and then we're gonna move on to the rest of the agenda. I see, okay. And is there a time estimate on that? Um, uh, probably in the next 15 minutes. Okay, so we ha if anybody's here to be interested in that, we should hang in here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Can we do that vote over again? I just wanted to make sure she wasn't commenting on this project. So there was Mary we'll made a motion to, to close the meeting on 674 Wendell Road. Okay. Second was? Second. Uh, David? Aye. Font? Aye. Harrington? Aye and Wilson. Aye. Okay, so um, I have drafted a, um, a determination. Um, I am wondering whether we want to do a determination number three with conditions or whether we want to do it without conditions given that this is such a limited project and it's already done. Um, Uh, Penny, uh, we can't have comments from the public because we we're outside the meeting. Were you asking a question about something else? No. Okay. But I would just say that I'd put the condition of the silt sock in your DOA, mm. which is already in place, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. So um, should I show you the draft? Um, DOA. Sure. 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 Okay, here we go. You guys can see it. I can't yeah. see. It. All right. Okay, so um, storage requested applicant 14 foot by four foot deep frost wall. And so what I have is a um, determination number three with special conditions. And let me stop screen sharing that and show you the special conditions. Oop, those are the wrong ones. Okay, here we go. Okay, do you see this? Yes. Okay. Yep. Applicant seeks approval for a foundation wall. Um, work is in the outer 100 feet of riverfront area to South Brook. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This is all boilerplate. Um, erosion, uh, straw filled erosion sock or straw waddles, no hay, limit of work. Um, and then uh, Unconsolidated material needs to be tarped. And in lieu of um, pre-construction site visit, the applicant will give us photographs and that's it. We're a little late for the photographs though, right? Well, he can show us that the erosion controls are in place. I and think, you he, I that think he sent that. Yeah, that was part of the package. Yeah. <laughs> what? That photo is, is in that packet of the silk sock installed. All right. Well, then we don't need to have that. Well, we won't since you've already done it. Okay. So, anything else? Okay. 
Is this an okay time to for me to ask a question? Um, probably. We we probably can't take questions from you at this point. I guess the, the question just is about something in that uh, document, the special conditions. Um, we're not supposed to be uh, taking comments once we've left the okay. public meeting. We've closed the public meeting. Uh, but I can't. We can answer the questions once we we finish deliberating. Are there anything here that folks want or want to change? No. 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 Looks good. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion to approve the determination number three, negative number three. We'll make a motion to approve the determination negative three for the 674 Wendell Road RDA. Okay, with special conditions. With special conditions. Okay, and we have a second. Second. Okay, David. Aye. Font, aye. Harrington. <laughs> aye. aye. Wilson. Hi. Okay. All right. Now I can answer your question if you had. Um... I'm all set. I had time to read it better while you were there. I'm all set. Sorry. Huckle, we'll send you um, by certified mail a copy and I'll email you a copy tomorrow. Great. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, that we appreciate it too. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the time you guys take. I know it's a lot. So thank you. All right. Have a good night. All right. Um, so what I wanted to do um, now is, is um, we have one short issue and then I'll get on to talking about an update on the enforcement order that some people are interested in. Um, but I see that George Abdow is here. George, hi. Is that you? I see a George. Hello? Yes, hello. I'm sorry, I don't mute. So you've submitted a planting plan, which was part of the order of conditions. And um, we didn't put it on the agenda because we just got the planting plan yesterday, but I think we can consider this unanticipated business. Um, so has everybody had a chance to look at it? We had asked them to put some of the details onto the site plan that were discussed in the, the uh, public hearing about existing plants and what they were adding. What was the address for that one? 56 uh, North Laurel Drive. Thanks. I don't have any questions. It looked fine to me. I don't have any questions. Okay. Beth, you? Um, yeah, it looked fine. I, I had missed the previous hearing. Oh, you weren't there. So <laughs> yeah. you, you would know. So I, I can't really <laughs> comment anyway. <laughs> okay. It, well, it it looks fine. I mean, it looks like exactly what we had discussed. So, uh, somebody want to make a motion to approve this um, planting plan? I'll make a motion to approve the planting plan for fifty six North Laurel. Okay, second. I second. Okay, David. Aye. Defont. Aye. Harrington. Aye. And Wilson. Aye. Okay. So. Um, Let's move on and just do some updates um, about the enforcement order for lot 032. Um, so since the last meeting, um, we did a site visit, a preliminary site visit, and we received a wetland delineation report um, on Tuesday um, that was produced by Fuss and O'Neill. And um, I've had um, a couple of other conversations that I can give people an update about. Um, and um, I shared with everybody photographs. I, when we did the site visit on last Saturday, um, I was taking photographs and I thought they were geotagged. Unfortunately, it was a new phone and they were not geotagged. So I went back yesterday morning and uh, took new photographs with um, my GPS with me so that I could get data points for where the photographs were. Um, so I put the photos in an album, a Google album, and I, I shared them. Uh, DEP 
Mary Grover had asked to see some photographs, which is um, why I uh, put them in a folder and I um, shared that with everybody and I can share it with anyone else who wants to look at them. Um, you can just send me an email. I'll, I'll, it's, I can share the link to the Google album. So um, I don't think we're in a position right now to talk a lot about the Fuss and O'Neill wetland delineation. We're gonna go out with the delineator um, on Saturday morning is the plan and yeah. everybody's available to go. Scott's out of town, so he's not gonna be able to. Um, I know when we were out on Saturday, there were some questions that came up about the way the delineations were done. Um, do you wanna have any discussion about that preliminarily right now? I think I'd rather wait until we hear from Fuss and O'Neill. So okay. if we walk with okay. them on Saturday, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, so um, I so I did one of the questions um, that I asked Mary Grover was um, when we went out um, last weekend, and this is really not a Fuss and O'Neill delineation question. This is a different issue. Um, we observed some debris on the property, some of which were in a wetland area. Um, there was um, a lot of debris in, in a section of that had um, that was a wetland and had been delineated. It looked like it. There was flagging to suggest that Fussell and O'Neill thought it was a wetland, and we can go back and look at that. Uh, but the question really is about the debris and what to do about the debris that's in a wetland, um, because that kind of does fall in our jurisdiction if we think that there needs to be a cleanup. Um, so the concerns and they're in the photos uh, include some, and I don't know the extent of all the debris. I didn't go mucking around in the water. So there could be more debris, but what I could see, there were tires in a wetland and there was also an area where there was a lot of broken glass and bits of rusty metal and metal sticking out of the ground and pieces of trash bags and bottles. It looked like it probably had been a spot where things had been dumped and then cleaned out. And um, I think from talking to Michael Hootstein, this is the area that he was concerned about when he made his complaint. He, he said that he was concerned that there had been work in a wetland um, removing trash. And um, when we went out and did our site visit in June, we didn't know where he was referring to. So we didn't find that spot, but um, uh, the spot that I'm um, talking about, um, I confirmed with Michael, is the location he was concerned about. And um, my concern was also around public safety because um, when I went out yesterday, I uh, found a medicine bottle full of some liquid um, and I found a syringe on the ground. Um, so, you know, I'm concerned about whether it's a, a safety hazard. So I did reach out to the Board of Health and I'm let's see what kind of feedback they have about it. Um, I see somebody has their hand raised. Do you want to speak, Shannon's dad? Yeah, hi, it's Steve Sullivan from the Highway Department. I see. So that spot you were talking about, yeah, there were someone that lived in that home had diabetes, so there were lots of syringes that. So we, the Highway Department, literally filled an entire dumpster with trash bags because that's where that household had dumped their trash for. It was filled up higher than the top of that sink that that hole it was full, that's how much trash there was back there wow and when was that steve that would have been last august when we did the the take down of the building and we pulled all the car parts and the 200 tires out of there okay and the tires where were they the biggest spot of tires was what would have been the animal pen right behind the building. There were probably 75 there. And then oh, there were probably 40 or so in that wetland and they were scattered all around the property. Okay. So there are still some, um, there still are some left. <laughs> it sounds like, um, cause I found, I found three or four 
as well as some car parts. Um, some of the car parts are not in, don't appear to be in wetland areas. Um, and I would say that that's not our jurisdiction. It would, you know, that's up to the town to, if they want to clean up. But um, I guess the question I have for the Conservation Commission is, um, since this is new information, um, you know, we didn't have this information two weeks ago or three weeks ago uh, when we met last. So what steps do we want to take around this to... Um, Well, I feel like the first step is to really get the, the wetland areas delineated, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't think I, I don't think we should do anything until there's an official almost approved delineation for the site. So Fuss and O'Neill has put something together and we need to review it and eventually, you know, approve that because we we can't say that some of those areas that, that you, you, you know, we think they look like wetlands, but I think I'd rather see what, okay. what they think. So Beth, what do we do? I mean, one of the things that has come up since we, we issued the enforcement order is the issue that we're not, we really should not be approving. I've, we've gotten, I've gotten feedback that we should not be approving a wetland delineation because this is not an ANRAD and it isn't, been reviewed in the way that it would need to be reviewed for a permit. Um, so I'm wondering whether we can accept a wetland delineation as satisfying the requirement for the uh, enforcement order, but reserve judgment for any future permitting, that it would not mean that we're approving that as the final wetland delineation for future permitting. It, it would not be an ANRAD. Right, or, yeah. Not be an ORAD. Mm -hmm. Right, I think we need to stick with whatever was written in the original enforcement order as as what the enforcement order is. So I don't remember exactly, but I think it basically was just strictly about the fill that was brought in, mm -hmm. right? And, and our question was that fill that was brought in is that, was that in buffer zone? We don't know because we, we weren't sure about the wetland lines. Um, so they've gotten Fuss and O'Neill out there to at least answer that question a little bit for us. But you're right, we can't actually, you know, approve the delineation as the official delineation under an enforcement order. Right. Um, for, we, for future permitting. Right. It's sort of just guidance for us in terms of determining if that fill was put into an area that could be considered buffer zone or 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 wetland. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna have to make it clear in some language to the town to make it clear at the point where we're releasing them from the, or dismissing the enforcement order, we're gonna to have to make that clear. Um, yeah. Because, uh, you know, it is a little, in, you know, honestly, I have to go back and look at the language in the enforcement order, but, um, you know, it, it does sort of suggest that they have to send a, a wetland report subject to our approval uh, which suggests that we're approving the wetlands. And um, I think we'd have to make that distinction that this is not for future permitting purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to look at the wording in the enforcement order in terms of like, what are the next steps? Because, you know, once they meet whatever we ask for in that enforcement order, then the enforcement order is done. Mm -hmm. um, let me look at that. Which will would leave the question of cleaning up the wetlands, if indeed all of this debris is in the wetlands, as a separate issue, right? Right, right. So it could be a second, um, a second request. I mean, you know, I guess rather than an enforcement order, I'm wondering whether we could make a request that they submit a permit application to do the cleanup within the wetlands. If, if, if we determine that we think that there is garbage in the wetlands, rather than them just going out and doing it on their own, that would do it under a permit, would I think be, mm -hmm. we would prefer, I, I would prefer to see us doing, um, you know, conditioning it under a permit, an RDA or an NOI. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so I'm thinking that we may want to um, 
once we, I agree with you about looking at the wetlands first, but it makes me think that at the next meeting, um, we need to um, have some written, um, Got, you know, written response to the town about whether we're satisfied and what we want next. And, you know, we left it open in the enforcement order that, you know, we were reserving judgment around future projects that might still require a permit. So I think that if we raise the concern at that point about the trash cleanup, we could make the request that they submit a permit, that they propose a cleanup plan and in, um, in the form of a permit application. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing I was a little concerned about was that um, when I I talked, I didn't talk with her, but I had an email with um, Kat Hilton from the Board of Health, and and she said, well, you know, the the Board of Health could issue an emergency order for cleanup if it was a safety risk to the public. And I guess my concern about that is that then that would require us to do an emergency certification, I think. And I'd really prefer to do this under a permit, not under an emergency certification, because you know there might be some conditions that we would wanna think about, about how they clean up the wetlands and how much needs to be done, how much work needs to be done, if there's any, you know, uh, any excavation, for example, that needs to be done to get some of this stuff out of the wetland area. Um, I'd, I'd like to have a public meeting where we can discuss that. We can't really do that under an emergency certification. Yeah, I don't see it as an emergency at this point. But it's a, it is a concern if the Board of Health were to issue that. I, I don't know what our options are. Do we have, we have to, um, is there a time limit that we have to, um, submit a, an emergency certification? There's, I think if the Board of Health were to, ish, to declare it an emergency and they would be the ones maybe requiring that the work be done in a certain amount of time if they declared an emergency. And in that case, because it's in a wetland, we would, we would almost, we would have to issue an emergency cert because the the town wouldn't have enough time to go through permitting. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, okay. Um, do you have any, I, I see some hands raised. I'll, I will call them folks. I just want to finish. Um, Janice, do you have any comments about this? Sorry. <laughs> um, no, not at this point. I think, you know, I'll wait and see what the, the site seems like with the uh, wetlands report. Okay. Um, Penny, you had your hand raised and then I think Steve. Um, hi, Penny. Uh, Penny Jakes, 23 Old Orchard Road. Um, I do know that Fuss and O'Neill is intending to submit, I think, an ANRAD um, at, as part of the wetland delineation. So. Um, that has been the intent all along. Okay. Just so you, that's clear. And just one question about cleanup. If people are removing tires from a wetland and just lifting a tire out, would you require a permit for that or only if there's excavation? I don't know. I mean, it seems lifting a tire off the ground is a very different thing than excavating debris out yeah. of the wetland. Just a thought. I just don't know what the extent of everything is. I think we need to look at the extent and what everything is before we can answer that question. Yeah. Uh, Steve. Yeah, so when we cleaned that spot out, all that was going through my head the whole time was the Alice's Restaurant song. So, I mean, it may look to you guys like there's still a lot of stuff there, but we stopped because at this point it really you'd be just excavating making a deeper hole there's really it's really no way to get the rest of that stuff out of there without just digging a hole and trucking all that stuff out right you'd have to scrape some soil out it would be a lot of it would be a lot of soil it wouldn't just be some yeah i don't know um yeah i, I understand that um and that's i guess my that's where we might want to get 
some guidance about recommendations because I don't know how deep, you know, there's kind of embedded debris in the soil right now. I don't know how deep, if it's just a very superficial layer of debris, um, it could be a safety hazard if the public is walking on trails and getting back there. So I think that's one of the questions, but also just for the sake of the health of the environment, whether it needs to be removed or not, I don't, I don't have an answer. I think we would need to get some consultation um, to figure out what the best approach would be. Yeah, so we never, we never tried to dig down because if you talk to some of the older folks in town, they'll tell you that there's lots of stuff buried out there. So we didn't want to find out that there's a whole nother thing hiding underneath that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I could see that. There is a lot of stuff buried there. We saw a lot of car. I mean, I I showed with the commission photographs, but I found we found um, car parts that were semi buried all over the property, different things, um, not just tires. Um, but again, those weren't necessarily in wetlands, and that's neither here nor there for us for our purposes. Um, but could be a safety hazard if someone trips over some rusty stuff that's buried or half buried, but there is a lot of stuff like that. Um, so um, I do also just wanna share that um, I had a conversation with the chair of the select board and um, talked a little bit about the enforcement order and kind of what our thought process had been for issuing it. And I, I'm just not gonna get into all of that, but she did want me to communicate tonight um, and I would, that uh, the select board did not feel included and didn't feel uh, that we um, used a due, that they did not, we did not exercise due process in um, including the select board in, in our assessment of um, what information we needed in order to issue the enforcement order. And um, what I communicated to her was that um, the information that we gathered at the meeting in July, on July 28th, um, in my opinion, and I, I, I'm assuming for the commission as well, because we all voted for it, um, that we did feel that we had enough information to come to the conclusion that work had been done without a permit within a protected resource area. And that falls under our jurisdiction. And um, in any other instance, we would have issued an enforcement order if it was um, a, a landowner besides the town. And so for the sake of consistency, we felt like we needed, to, in my opinion, needed to do something to be responsive to the complaints and, and responsive to the information that was provided to us um, in that meeting. Um, so while I respect um, that it didn't feel good, and I, I'm sorry about that because and I did share this with Rita that it was never my intention to humiliate or, or be aggressive or critical of anyone um, or to be uh, in some way um, antagonistic toward the town. I wanna to support the town and respect and support the projects that the town votes for and, and wants to um, see come to fruition. And so I think we all support that and want this, the same thing uh, but felt like we had to do our due diligence um, around what we're tasked with. Um, and there was a question that was raised again about why we didn't come to meet with a select board first before we made the decision to issue an enforcement order. And I just wanna be clear again, and I shared this with Rita, that we would be happy to meet with a select board to talk about general process issues or communication issues um, but in a circumstance where we're investigating the conduct or actions or work that's done by the town and we're in a jurisdictional role, we have to really maintain our independence. And, um, you know, it would be the same if, um, you know, maybe this isn't a good analogy, but if we were investigating um, some applicants, some landowner who had done work without a permit, and they called me up and said, gee, I'd really like you to meet with me privately before you issue the enforcement order. That really wouldn't be appropriate for me to be doing that. Um, and I, I, even if it was in a public meeting, I think you know the issue is around independence and remaining impartial and not being um, subject to whatever influence we might feel in a public meeting, um, which I think, could be um, 
a challenge. So um, try, where I, the goal here is really to have just kind of clean lanes, kind of um, keep our, our regulatory hat on when we're doing regulatory stuff and keeping our, our kind of town partner hat on when we're being a partner with the town. Thank you for that, Miriam. Thank you. It's not clear. I don't know if I was clear about that, but um, so it's not meant to be um, negative or um, in some way attacking of the town. Um, it's really about trying to just do our due diligence. Um, and because the select board is our appointing authority, um, you know, I guess that makes it challenging then to um, have those discussions about this particular project with a select board in a meeting that we're not convening. If we go to the select board meeting and we're having a joint meeting with them, we're not convening as a regulatory meeting. We're not gonna be deliberating or issuing an enforcement order at a select board meeting. That wouldn't be the process. And I, I, I think that that, um, I, you know, I think from the perspective of the public, they they might have some questions about our independence if we did that. But it doesn't feel good and I'm sorry. Um, and we want to work with the town and get this resolved. So I, I think I sh everybody else um, shares that. Good job. Thank you. So um, we had in the enforcement order a plan to review and do a site visit and then review the uh, wetland delineation at this meeting. However, because we didn't get the wetland delineation until Tuesday um, and it was week, you know, we just didn't have time to schedule a site visit. And so we really um, could not have that discussion tonight. They did offer to meet with us tonight and to have Fuss and O'Neill come tonight. And I suggested that that wasn't uh, the best way to do it, that we should go do the site visit first and then um, have the Fuss and O'Neill wetland scientists come to the meeting with the select board, I think, on the 22nd. So um, I believe I have a time set up. Let me just double check our schedule for the 22nd. I have it on the agenda. I haven't posted it yet, but it'll be at seven o'clock. And I believe the select board will be coming or a representative from the select board will be coming. Um, I don't know. I, I think I saw is um, Eric here. Is that true, Eric? Hello? Maybe he's not there. Eric, you're, you're muted. Okay. Um, so no, my, I am here. Sorry, sorry, my mouse was dead. So um, <laughs> the question was the twenty second, the meeting on the twenty second. That's the question. Yeah, would the select board be coming or a representative from the select board? I, we have not discussed it. I I would assume so, but I don't know that. We have not discussed it. So okay, I, well, could, yeah. could you could you bring that up at your next meeting? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Be, thank you. Okay. So in the meantime, just so you guys know, I have, um, so as I told you, I had consulted with Mary Grover at DEP. I also posed some questions to MACC to their helpline and someone in from their um, legal department is going to be getting back with some guidance next week and I'll share what I find out. Okay. Um, and Michael, did you have some comments you wanted to make? Um, hello. Yeah, hi, Michael. Can you hear? You can hear me. Good. Um, yeah, no. Uh, just really appreciate uh, the due process you have provided to this, uh, to getting the information and then uh, making an informed decision based on the facts of the case. Um, um, I do. Um, I just look quickly at the uh, at the delineation. And right off the bat, I will be making a challenge based on the IVW2 and the IVW4 based on the definition of an isolated vegetated wetlands. Um, once you have a hydrologically connected uh, protect, resource, it's no longer isolated, according to the 
to the reg. So I'm looking forward to doing it the way Mary suggested, which is to first identify the protected resources. And, um, and then uh, there is some new information that's come up with this area that we have now have uh, DEP has released the finding of uh, PFAS in the closest well to the east. And so it's directly related to, um, to whether or not these are protected wetlands and where the subsurface streams are and where the pond is and how everything's hydrologically connected. So I don't know if the, uh, the Conservation Commission can start thinking about, I mean, what a wonderful example that you're all setting. Um, and I do feel that Fuss and O'Neill's done a really honest and the town is really coming forward now. We're all coming together. Thanks, Steve Sullivan, for sharing with us what he knows about the site. And we're all on the same team here. And we've got to remember that. Um, you know, uh, the country is political turmoil. We're a little town. We depend on each other. So uh, I think it's important that you fairly, we fairly uh, review anybody's complaint. And then we make a decision based on the laws and the regulations like you're doing. So thank you very much. You know, that's, okay. you know, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. And, and I also want to thank Steve for um, coming to the meeting and giving us some information. It's really helpful, Steve. Um, one thing in terms of updates that I forgot to bring up, um, and I know that uh, I sent an email to the select board and to the rest of the commission, but for the benefit of the public, I'll just share it, that um, I did have a conversation with the program director for the underground injection control um, well program and confirmed with him that an automotive garage floor drain is considered to be an underground injection control well that has to be, um, if it's removed, you have to follow the DP regulations for the removal. And how he explained it is that um, you have to uh, register the well before you remove it with a proposal for how you're going to, um, my phone is talking to me. <laughs> um, the phone just said, I don't understand that. Um, so um, you, in that registration process, the uh, applicant proposes how they're going to test the soil. And then as it's removed, they test the soil as they're going down, um, taking multiple um, tests, soil tests in the location of where the drain is and then where the outfall is if there's an outlet to it. So that if there was an outfall to it, um, there would be two testing locations. And they because it would be an automotive garage, well, they have a specific menu or suite of soil tests that they require in addition to things like uh, petroleum products and volatile organic compounds. They also have a number of minerals, including some heavy metals testing. Um, so he said that they would be coordinating with the Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup around whatever steps would be required of the town. So it's not our responsibility. It's not Conservation Commission jurisdiction. Um, I'm just sharing it um in the interest of trans of transparency um he did say that even if the well has already been removed um you can't do it you can no longer do the tests the way they would be originally um proposed because you're not removing you're not testing as you remove and you don't know exactly where the drain is and where the outfall was but they would require some sort of post removal testing and they would figure that out and he said that it's a slow process and that probably his office wouldn't be coming up with any opinions about it for quite some time that's all he said yeah steve yeah, so they they could certainly still test the soil because we didn't remove anything except for the floor itself. So the the soil that was on the gravel that was underneath the floor is still all there in in the place that it was. And I could, 
it would be easy enough to find the, the drain point because the outline of the building is still there too. Yeah. Well, that might be helpful. And, um, you know, I'm sure with, if they require it, you know, that's something you can help um, the town with. Uh, but again, it's kind of neither here nor there for us, I think. Um, I'm just sharing it because it was some information I gathered. And I did uh, send this to, um, to the select board. Um, and the other thing he said is that from the evidence that they have in their files, including photographs, um, he said that they have enough evidence to prove that there was a drain. So I don't think that there's a, that's a up for debate whether there was a drain or not. Um, really kind of what needs to be done now going forward. And sounds like that'll happen in the right time. Wow. Any other comments? Are we ready to move on? Is there anything, any comments or questions from the public? I, Steve, did you have another question? Your hand still raised. Okay, no. Anybody else? No, but I'll just say thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So um, I know I'm looking at the agenda. Penny was going to talk briefly to give us an update on some issues related to um, Southbrook Conservation Area and the Top of the Lake Conservation Area. So um, do you want to do that, Penny? Um, yes. Um, so two quick things. Um, I was in touch with the commission and the select board and our police chief over the summer to discuss a sign and the language for that I think is all finalized. Um, Miriam, I have a this is a specific question for you, which is where did you have a sign printed? Um, you're talking about the signs that we put up on South Brook Conservation. I got, it was, what is, um, I think it was Amherst Copy Center. They're in Hadley now. Yep, okay. I wondered if that's where it was. I mean, okay. I don't know what the inflation for those little signs, you know, it's kind of like a standard oblong sign, which I don't think is what you're talking about. It was about $70. Okay, thank you. So um, in the next few weeks, I'm going to have a sign printed or fabricated, I guess, and install that um, in working on the site. I have observed along the shoreline, there's a huge amount of glossy buckthorn. And I wanted to ask the commission um, what their thought was about removing that. I have access to a tool called a weed wrench, which is like a giant, giant um, five foot tall plumber's wrench where it, um, the base of it grabs onto the stem and just lifts it out of the sound, the ground with very minimal disturbance. And so um, I don't know if you would consider, consider that being something that could be done under the umbrella of the order of conditions that's already there or whether how you would wanna proceed with that. So it pulls it up by the roots? It grabs this, the base of the, the stem of the tree right at the root level and just yanks it out of the ground. I will say the site, the, the shoreline is pretty well vegetated. Um, there are, a number of sedges and grasses growing there as well as other shrubs, but there's a huge amount of glossy buckthorn. Mm -hmm. And it's very conspicuous right now because the leaves are still on it and it's covered with berries. So that's a question for you. And do you wanna, what do people think? Let's. I think it's always great to get rid of invasives. Um, I don't, First, I don't remember the order conditions. I don't know if we talked about um, invasive removal, um, but no, I mean, I I'm kind of always a fan of it. <laughs> yeah, there was not part of the order because I don't think any of us were um, aware of the abundance of it at the time the project was conceived and the notice was filed. Mm. Yeah, I'm all for yeah. getting rid of it if at all possible. Penny, are you, would you do this yourself or you do have someone to help I you with do this? And I would invite some of the commission to join me because it, it's a very <laughs> satisfying task. I would be there. My master's and PhD dealt with invasive plants. I'm with you. I don't think it needs to be a permit. Um, 
And if you want to email us and set up a work party, I'm certainly willing to help as well. So um, great. you want a few, pick a weekend day maybe, or even a weekday, it could be, I'm happy yeah. to help. Okay, I will do that. Um, and the second thing is Southbrook. So Miriam had asked me where things were with Southbrook. And those of you who are, have been following this know that Liam Cregan was hired to map the wetlands. He did that last, I think, he provided maps, um, detailed photographs and information last spring. And I think we all decided that we wanted to go back out there as a group and review the site with map in hand with Liam. And then um, what I hope comes from that is we decide what trails we wanna keep, what trails we might want to reroute, what trails new trails we might want to um, add to connect the trails that are in the south part of the property to the north part of the property a little bit better. Anyway, there's a lot to be discussed. And so what I uh, would like to do is propose that we find a time in the next month to go out and do a site visit. Um, I think we might need to pick a couple of times. I'm not sure I haven't been in touch with Liam regularly, but I know he works. So I'm hoping you guys can come up with one or two, I'm guessing weekend times when we might do that, that I can propose to Liam. Yeah, I think we should do it a weekend um, um, just to make it possible, especially with, you know, it's getting darker during the day, um, mm -hmm. the afternoon and Beth works and um, Scott is away in, uh, right now, but he'll be back in October. Um, so um, I'd like to see us find a couple, a weekend day. And, um, you know, maybe when we're out there, we could talk a little bit about bog bridge repairs. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think it's more than repairs. I think from what I, I haven't looked at, at Liam's proposal in the past uh, short amount of time, but I think he proposed a number of um, protections be put in place for trails that go through wet areas. Um, and of course, the other alternative is to um, move them to other spots. But I think there's a fair amount of work that needs to be done before we officially create a map and um, announce the trail system more broadly. Did he, did he give an estimate of how much bog bridge bridging he thought was necessary? How, how many? Yeah. Um, I'd have to go back and look through his list. I would say there were 10 or 12 just, and that's totally off the top of my head. Could you, um, just to, so we don't have to go searching, Penny, could you send us all of the maps and his report? Yep. Because um, I remember I was having trouble locating his report. I saw the map, but um, in the photos, but they I were- I have, a, I have it all in a folder so I can do that. And- uh, so it would be great if as a group, you guys picked a couple of weekend days. Um, unfortunately, my schedule is tough over the next month, but um, I would like to be there since the, the project yeah, is well, I, no. my heart. So do you wanna do it right now? Come up with some dates right now? Um, sure, so I'm gone um, this coming weekend. I'm tied up the weekend. Uh, I'm around on the weekend of the 17th. I'm around the weekend of the first, and then I'm gone much of October. Okay. I'm around the middle of I'm around on in the middle of October, but not the first two weeks or the last week. Well, um, would October first be, or that weekend of October first or second be okay? Yes, the first would be the first would work for me. Um, the morning of the second would work for me. Okay. I'm just thinking that with um, Scott being gone, he uh, might be back by October 1st or 2nd, I think. And can um, we- October for, Is October 1st a Saturday? Yes. yes. Okay. So- um, Sunday we... morning, I'm tied up, but I think Saturday I'm free and Sunday afternoon, I'm free. Okay. And then could we come up with one other Saturday in October, just in case Liam is uh, not available? 
I I am so October first would be the Saturday, right? Um, well, what's the next one that you're available, Penny? I am the only other one I'm available is the fifteenth. Is that isn't that Columbus Day weekend? Yes, I think that might be hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm. I think I'm on available then. It's like after that, the second half of October, I'm going to be away. Okay, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not do it on the weekend that weekend. Um, so, uh, Beth, what's your feeling about? Columbus Day weekend. Yeah, actually, that's that's actually not Columbus Day weekend. <laughs> Columbus Day weekend's the weekend before because Columbus oh. Day is the tenth. Okay. But but I'm I I'm actually I not available Columbus Day weekend, which is the eighth and the ninth and then the tenth, and I'm also not available the fifteenth or the sixteenth. After that, I am. So the next Saturday, the twenty second or the 29th. But that sounds it doesn't match up with Robin's schedule. <laughs> right. Ours are, are kind of backwards, but um, right. yeah. at least one of us will be able to make yeah. one of those others. Okay. So it sounds like our, our, our October 1st is our best date. And I will propose, Do that. if that doesn't work, I'll propose the, I guess the 15th to Liam because that's not Columbus Day weekend. Um, but Beth has not. A <laughs> right, but you know, it's hard. That's okay. <laughs> the bigger the group, the harder it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, I think if it gets too much later, it also is just kind of more unpleasant because you've got slippery leaves on slopes. When yeah. right, it gets yeah. to be. Although it's not as slippery there as some places. And uh, just, this is unrelated to what we're talking about, but um, I don't think anyone from the commission has contacted our neighborhood about a, um, a conservation um, site visit for our, yeah. our conservation risk. Where are you with those things at this point? We have to get some scheduled. So um, we need to schedule it with you. Who is your point person on that at this point? It is nobody. Mm, you need to get one of your members in charge of uh, conservation restrictions. Who wants to do that? Anybody want to do that? It's pretty easy. There aren't very many of them. I would love it if somebody else would take that on. I mean, I know, I know when uh, when I was on the commission, Linda Scott had a particular interest in that, and she actually became our expert on it. But it, obviously, it can be anyone who's willing to just sort of learn the ropes. And uh, I would say that all of the restrict conservation restrictions that the commission holds are pretty straightforward ones. I, I feel like, and I don't want to like put it on Scott, but he, I honestly feel like he was interested in that. I think yeah. this, I so think maybe we well, just wait and we ask Scott. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I feel, I'm feeling that Scott is wanting to do this. So we will talk to him about that. Okay. I think. <laughs> Well, just, you know, I was just putting yeah. a little bee in your bonnet. So, um, so yeah. we do need to do the um, CA, the CR visit um, with you guys. So um, do you want to you also need to do the one on Chuck Damari's property? Right. And that one, um, Sumner Mountain, in the past, we got um, Charlie Eisman to do it for Charlie you. Charlie Eisman to do it, which because it's a, a kind of a challenging location. Um, do we want to do that again this um, this year? Should I reach out to Charlie Eisman and get a quote from him? Sure. Okay. I will do that. And um, Penny, do you want to um, give us some, you know, give us some, who, who would be the point person well, for scheduling? The point that. person is typically our president of our association, and that's currently Sean Meyer. And I can provide you with his contact information. Okay. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. I'm going to sign off. Thank you, Penny. Okay. Appreciate everything. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, in terms of next site visits before our next meeting, um, we need to do a site visit at 58 Lake Drive. They have a notice of intent. Um, 
and I'm blocking on what that notice of intent involves. I haven't looked at the packet yet. Um, Carrie, do you know briefly what the, what their notice of intent was? What was it again? What, what, 58, 58 Lake Drive. Oh, yeah, from what she explained to me, it sounded like they have, and they provided pictures that I sent to you in the um, NOI when I scanned it. It's basically like, um, I guess it's like a retaining wall, but it's not like an actual wall. It's kind of just like a, a layer of rocks kind of on their bed. And it seemed, sounded like they wanted to move it up due to um, oh, right. activity within the lake that they were trying to prevent erosion or movement of the rocks. So this is another bank project. Um, yeah. So the hearing is for the 22nd. Um, so um, I'm hoping that perhaps we can do some site visits on September 18th we need to do that one and it's possible there might be another uh couple projects by then so um that was my hope would be to do it right before the um maybe on sunday the 18th does that work for everybody are we <clears throat> sorry are we doing the fuss and o'neill this saturday we're doing it this saturday is there a time for that yet i'm just nine like o'clock okay Oh yeah, I have it in my calendar already. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Looking at my phone. <laughs> it's nice when it works out that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, and we have uh, the public hearing for 66 Lake Drive is going to happen also on the 22nd. Um, so, and I believe the time I put it in the agenda, what time that was going to be 8, 8, 8, 8 35 because um sorry 8 35 yes. landowner uh bob douglas is got a previous meeting and asked if he could have it later and i um we usually go way past 8 35 though tonight is 8 48 we're almost done it's amazing um okay all right so i'm going to um look to schedule that meeting that site visit for uh sunday morning the 18th with those on landowners and maybe we'll have some more projects by then and i will be in touch about a time to look at the dudleyville dam who would like to go to that one just so i can think about when it's going to be scheduled i mean i, I would go if it, it fits my schedule like <laughs> all right well that, 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 that yeah. could be in your neighborhood i mean it could easily we could do that at 3 30 on a weekday yep so we'll shoot for that we'll try to do a weekday all right Okay, so I think we're done for tonight. And Carrie, I will um, package up that D DOA and email it to you. And can you mail it out tomorrow? Yeah, I can mail it out. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. I'm done. Anything else? Yay. 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 An early night. All I right. would just like to remind a uh, motion to adjourn because last meeting we'd be left without anything so yeah i forget to do that i also forget apparently my kids have been reminding me that sometimes when i'm on the phone <laughs> i just put the phone down <laughs> and i don't hang up <laughs> it's just like um, muscle motion to adjourn. like motion to adjourn <laughs> okay so mary you made a motion to adjourn do we have a second <laughs> second i second okay david i Font, I Harrington. I uh, uh, Wilson. I. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.